Hello and welcome back to Homebrew. Today we'll be recapping session 14 of the Call of the Hunger campaign, as well as preparing for session 15. Now last time we left off, our party had ventured off into Lamore, And as they were there, they had uh, reconnoitered with the Natari gang, the gang of bug people, and had basically figured out that they needed to go do them some favors to smooth things out and really press the offensive and give them some leverage against the gang of uh, rock people called the Onyx. And so the party had decided to set off and basically try to infiltrate one of the penthouses of the Onyx. And so that's what we had prepared for our session. Now, what did uh, the party end up doing? Well, they ended up trying to pursue every other side quest that we've ever bothered to ping in Lamor. Right. And so luckily enough, we had a lot of stuff already prepared from our previous sessions that we were able to pivot on the fly. For instance, if we open up our Call of the Hunger notes, we had generic places already laid out for them. Uh, they went and ended up asking about taverns. So we had the in and out we had the cocoon and the linen spinner. Uh, they ended up asking about where they could get some uh, some resources. And I think the, the characters really enjoyed their little sequence with the scraped scraps uh, with Mesa there. And I think that, that all went really well. Furthermore, filling out this world gave them a chance to start thinking about how to prepare for their assault on the Onyx Fort. When the crew ended up uh, investigating the area and trying to go up into the nicer area of town, uh, I think it really gave them a, a good chance to uh, practice some alternative skills. Uh, one thing that I didn't have prepared, bad DM, was that I had some notes that I had taken and I had updated in my Google Doc here. But I had other notes that I had left in my texts because normally I'll just text myself my notes as I'm thinking throughout the day. And there was stuff that I had left in there that wasn't here. So I had to kind of scramble at one point or another uh, to kind of recoup from that. Uh, and so that's where I ended up after this for the art preparation for session 15 was I ended up updating these with the slag grinder, which is their their opportunity to be gladiatorial in Lamore if the party ever chooses that they actually want to do that do that. Which, you know, most DD parties are gonna want something like that where they can fight for money in town. So uh that was a, a potential option. Um and it really added some clout to the whole uh is uh, is our little rat and friend still getting uh, in investigated by the harvesters, right? So we had that little uh, that tension exchange there. And uh, we got to introduce Soup and Slick, the uh, elephant and rat duo, which, which is basically our uh, reskin of Master Blaster from uh, Mad Max and the Thunderdome. So some kind of really fun real relationship there. Um, and yeah, so we had that little interaction, so a bit of a slip up on my part, but I think that it all ended up working out. We had a great chance for the party to really think about how they're going to approach the uh, penthouse. They were talking about time of day, and that's something that I I'd assumed that I was just going to have the party show up uh, when the place was uh, lean, right? So that there was a skeleton crew at the penthouse. It started to make me think, oh, what, what would I do if the crew showed up when there was a lot of people there, right? Like the house was full. And I started to kind of panic mid-session for that, but I think it all worked out because the party, I think I was able to uh, uh, foreshadow that that would be a bad thing for them if that ended up happening. Uh, they had some great plans with showing up uh, at night, doing all of their scaling and trying to find a back route in during the night and then waiting till morning until everyone leaves to finish going into the penthouse. So it really set us up for success on our follow session follow-up session. We had to scramble a little bit with some of our side quest material for the party, and just that we had a lot of places that they were going to be going, a lot of questions that they were asking, and we had just bare notes on it. So what I ended up doing is just making a, whole, a bunch of generic NPCs that they ran into uh, right off the fly. I ended up having to actually go back to my last video and checking the names on one. Uh, Danik, the uh, portly orc who was uh, at the front of the Cheto Corp that they met the uh, met the uh, the possum looking uh, researcher who gave them more information about the uh, the strange black dot that they had uh, contracted on the taking root campaign mini campaign at the start of this. So um, I thought that all worked out pretty well. We just need to be a little bit more prepared for when the party starts 
pursuing those venues here in a little bit. But what do we need for our next session? Not much, because we already have the whole penthouse sequence already figured out. One thing I started to look into is, you know, I know the party is going to go back to Ammo and look for leads to the missing centaur. So I just prepared a couple more NPC names so I wouldn't be caught off guard. Uh, and what their uh, trail of breadcrumbs would be required in order for them to actually find Wyland. So there's a guy there who's going to lead them to someone who is kind of an in, inside man uh, at A and B Corp. Uh, and then they can work out like a heist to get Wyland out, provided that they allow um, the person at Ammo to basically do a, uh, do a quick overview of Wyland. Uh, and that's kind of where the party can be like a little uncomfortable about it, because Wyland's going to be like, I don't want an extra set of scientists looking at me, right? So the party will have to decide whether or not they want to back you know basically betray ammo after they get uh get wyland out right so we got some fun dynamic that we can work with it there also what uh will happen after the party retrieves the rod from the penthouse and then they retrieve the uh paperwork from the uh, from the bank, from Petrogovich Bank, and return them to the Atari. What happens next, right? There's a whole uh, uh, wholesale fight breakout in town. Uh, I decided that really what we need for motivations is we need the Natari's motivations, right? Because they'll get the, this uh, these items as leverage against the bronze. Um, and so what are they going to do with them, right? And I thought that the best thing that they could do from their perspective would be to sue for peace right say hey we'll give these back to you the bronze but then it's truce here and then the uh on the flip side you know the players will feel like they will be get, getting betrayed if we do it that way so um what did the party what does the party get out of it right and the way we could do this is maybe the natari is a safe place right so the bronze can't hunt them when they are with the natari in the natari's territory but uh they're still huntable outside of there something like that will allow the party to really start making some claims and maybe we end up into an all-out war we don't know so uh that's really a problem for another day as a dm uh but we got our uh preparatory stuff set up for our next session we scrambled to redocument our notes so I, if i go to we are here i just did a a quick note recap on um who they ran into at the different uh places that they they had investigated and i've got the correct day that they're going in and assaulting the penthouse so i pretty much said it. and that's about it so not a lot today in our prep and recap um just a couple quick scrambles for our recap uh for recap our, our recap and um just uh steady as she goes as far as our next session so thank you for tuning in for this uh, recrap, uh, recrap, I should just call them recraps at this point because that's that's what it turns into as a DM, right? Uh, and uh, you know what? We will be seeing you on our next session of the Call of the Hunger.